Hello students, welcome to exam companion. Today we will start with the explanation of chapter 1 of NCERT geography textbook for class 7th. The name of the chapter is environment. After a long vacation, a student, Ravi, started going to school again. He noticed that a playground next to his school was dug up. On asking, Ravi got to know that in the place of the ground, huge buildings will be constructed there. On hearing this, Ravi realized that now he won't be able to play in the playground, which had soft grass, flowers, butterflies, etc. This story showcases that how humans are modifying the environment because of their needs, which are increasing day by day. So before talking any further, Let's first understand what is environment. Environment is a basic life support system, means that environment supports life. It's the place, people, things and nature that surround any living organism. For example, while watching this video, say if you are sitting in your living room, then your phone, laptop, sofa, table, parents, fan, etc. All these things are a part of environment. So now you may have noticed that it contains both living and non-living things. A question may arise that why is environment important for us? There are many reasons for that. Environment is important because it provides us the water we drink, the food we eat, the air we breathe in and the land on which we live. I repeat again, it provides us water, food, air and land. June 5 is celebrated as the World Environment Day every year. Now, environment can be of two types, natural and man-made. We'll first study natural environment. Natural environment means the objects that are created by nature. For example, mountains, animals, water bodies, trees, insects, birds, and so on. These elements exist naturally, meaning they do not exist because of humans. What does that mean? For example, a chair is made by humans out of wood, but a mountain or a bird is not made by human. Also, I want to highlight a point here is that natural environment can be biotic or abiotic which we will discuss in detail in the later slides. So now, since we have discussed natural environment, so what is the other type of environment? Yes, the other type of environment is man-made environment. Man-made environment consists of elements made by people. These elements do not occur naturally. For example, man created notebooks, cars, bicycles, computers, laptops and bridges. These things do not occur naturally in the environment. Now students, pay attention. As I told you earlier, natural environment consists of biotic and abiotic components. So what is biotic environment then? Bio means life and ik means like. So biotic means lifelike. Biotic environment is the world of living organisms, for example, animals, insects, plants, and so on. Now, since we've studied biotic environment, so what is the other type of natural environment? Yes, it is the abiotic environment. Abiotic environment is the world of non-living elements, for example, sunlight, water, land, and air. So the non-living elements which exist naturally constitute abiotic environment. I hope I am clear. But car and buildings are not abiotic because they are man-made. They are not natural and as we know abiotic is an example of natural environment. So remember this point. As you know, natural environment is made up of land, 
water, air, plants and animals. Right? So now we will discuss spheres that are related to these components. So first up we have lithosphere which is related to land. You've also studied these spheres in your sixth standard but we'll discuss them in detail here. Lithosphere is the solid crust or hard top layer of the earth. In the next chapter you will see that earth has many layers like an onion. So lithosphere is the top layer of all those layers. Lithosphere is up to 100 km deep. So what does it mean? It means that if you start digging a hole in the earth, then you may find lithosphere up to 100 km at maximum. Beyond that, there will be the next layer of the earth which is called mantle. Lithosphere is made up of rocks and minerals covered by a thin layer of soil. And lastly, lithosphere has various landforms such as mountains, valleys, plains and plateaus. For example, in India itself, we have the Himalayan mountains, the Deccan plateau, northern plains and so on. So now, the question arises, why is lithosphere important? Well, there are several reasons. Number one, it provides us forests. Forests are important for oxygen, shelter, they are home to animals and many more reasons. Lithosphere provides us grasslands for grazing, animals like cows. And lastly, lithosphere also provides us land for agriculture and human settlements. Human settlements means houses, shops, etc. So after covering lithosphere, next up we have the domain of water, that is hydrosphere. So as we just discussed, hydrosphere is the domain of water. It is the total amount of water on earth. That is, all the water on earth together makes hydrosphere. It includes surface water, for example, water in rivers and lakes, underground water, for example, water in wells, and the water in air, that is, the water vapors. From the above point, we can deduce that hydrosphere can be liquid, gas or solid. That is, water can be in vapor form, liquid form or ice form. So I hope that hydrosphere is clear to all of you. Next we have atmosphere. Atmosphere is the thin layer of air that surrounds the earth. Now, if it is a thin layer of air, so what is holding it together? The answer is gravitational force of earth. So the earth's gravitational force holds this blanket of air together. Next question that comes to mind is what does atmosphere do? So yes, it protects us from harmful rays and scorching heat of the sun. And lastly, we'll say that atmosphere consists of gases like oxygen, nitrogen, etc., dust and water vapors. So we have already studied the domain of land, lithosphere, water, hydrosphere and air, atmosphere. Now we will study about biosphere. So plant and animal kingdom together make biosphere. Now as you know that we humans, plants and animals need water, air and land for our survival. So biosphere is nothing but a zone where land, water and air interact to support life. So when water, air and land interact, that forms biosphere and it supports life. So now again we have a story. At a camp that Ravi was attending, on seeing a heavy rain, Jessie said that it reminded her of her home in Kerala. Kerala, where they have lush green fields, coconut plantations and they receive a lot of rain. Hearing this conversation, a girl from Rajasthan told 
that they receive very less rain in Rajasthan and that how they see a lot of animals like camels, lizards, snakes and many insects. Students, this story highlights the fact that animals and vegetation vary from, from place to place depending on the surroundings. For example, you do not get to see camels in Kerala or you do not see many coconut plantations in North India. So students, as we have just seen in our story that all plants, animals and human depend on their surroundings. Also, they are dependent on each other. For example, human require plants for food and oxygen. Similarly, plants depend on human for CO2, which is necessary for photosynthesis and so on. So now we will study about ecosystem. Ecosystem is nothing but the relation between living organisms and the relation between living organisms and their surroundings. So the relation between living organisms, what does it mean? It means that the relation between humans and animals, the relation between plants and animals and so on. For example, as we just discussed, human depends on plants and plants depend on humans. So this is the relation between living organisms. And what do we mean by relation between living organisms and their surroundings? So for example, monsoon crops, also known as kharif crops or rice crops, only grow in humid and hot conditions. So these crops, plants, they depend on the conditions. That is, they require humidity and high temperature. Ecosystem may contain biotic and abiotic parts. Biotic, for example, animals and plants and abiotic, for example, temperature and humidity. Also, ecosystem can be very small like a pond or they can be very large such as river and trees. Now, to keep an ecosystem intact, we need energy. So, the basic source of energy in almost all ecosystems is the sunlight. Let's see an example. For example, in a forest which is an ecosystem, plants do photosynthesis and produce food using sunlight. Now, these plants are eaten by herbivores such as deer. And these herbivores are then eaten by animals like lions and tigers. So now we see that they are dependent on each other and they are also depending on their surroundings. And it is nothing but an ecosystem. Now I have a question for you. How do you get stuff? Or how do you say if you want apples, then how do you get apples? Obviously, you pay money and in return you get apples, right? Yes, exactly that is what happens. You pay money and you buy apples. But what if I say that you do not have money but you have bananas and you still want apples. So what will you do? You do not have money. You have bananas and you want apples. So you can exchange bananas for apples. It's simple, right? So this is nothing but barter system. In this, goods are exchanged without the use of money. Students, barter system has a disadvantage. So we are considering the case on our screen. Here, Joey has bananas and the fruit seller has apples. We know that Joey wants apples. But what if fruit seller doesn't want bananas? In that case, will he accept bananas in exchange for apples? No. So, for barter system to work, both the parties, here Joey and fruit seller, must want the thing that other person has. So, if the fruit seller wants bananas and Joey wants apples, then barter system will work. So, barter system is nothing but a system in which goods are exchanged without the use of money. So students, now coming to the last topic of our chapter, we will study about human environment. So 
so in earlier days the needs of humans were less so they adapted themselves according to environment but as time went on humans felt the need to grow and develop hence their needs started increasing for example many years back not a lot of houses had air conditioners but now air conditioners are common in every home or thousands of years back there were no vehicles so man used to walk or use animals for transportation so as man's needs increased he started changing so he learned new ways to grow crops he also started domesticating animals for example cows for their milk chickens for their eggs and so on also transportation improved man invented wheels then they invented vehicles trains airplanes and so on also when transportation improved communication also improved as you must have seen in movies earlier pigeons were used then we started using telephones and finally now we use mobile phones also humans established industries for producing various things such as tools vehicles machines etc so we can say that now man modifies nature according to his needs which obviously has bad effects like pollution global warming and so on so students with that we have completed our chapter 1 of geography we will cover chapter 2 which is inside our earth in the next video i advise you to practice back exercise questions on your own first but if you have any doubts then you can visit the link mentioned in the video description for ncert back exercise solutions and important question answers okay students see you in the next video